Thank you. May I ask each one of us to sit as we share in the Lord's Prayer, which is on page 10. Together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I in the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. The collect for this day, as we remember a servant of the Lord, the leader in the church, and also a martyr and a witness. Oh God, by whose providence the blood of martyrs is the seed of the church, grant that we remember before you, blessed Janani, Archbishop and martyr in Uganda, may like him be steadfast in our faith in Jesus Christ, to whom he gave obedience even to death, and by his sacrifice brought forth a plentiful harvest. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, who gave to your servant Janani Loom and his champions boldness to confess the name of our Savior Jesus Christ before the rulers of this world and courage to die for this faith. Grant that we may always be ready to give a reason for the hope that is in us. And so suffer gladly for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I invite the choir as we prepare for the reading to sing that hymn together with us which is in Luo number 108, and also fill thy mind, thou my life, O Lord God. The rest of you will be seated as the choir will sing together with us. <laughs>
invite Honorable Lillian Abair for the reading. Honorable Lillian. We are on page 12 of our order of service. First reading is taken from the books of Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 21 to 24. Here it's how it reads. This I recall to my mind, therefore have high hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because this compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, save my soul, therefore will I hope in him. This is the word of God. I invite you to stand up as we sing uh, on page 12 as we prepare the, for the Apostles' Creed. Please. On your feet, we stand to give glory to God. Alleluia, where both ye is true. Alleluia.
are going to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 13. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come, come again to judge, judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the, of the body, and, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please, you can be seated. May I now ask the choir to make this special uh, song as we share together with them in the words that they are going to sing. On page 14.
Thank you so much. We can give a hand clap to God for that special song. Your grace, we are privileged this morning that God has visited us with a number of guests. Uh, some of the guests will be introduced to you later on uh, by the Minister of State of Ethics and Integrity, the Office of the President. But for now, we have a few members that we would like to recognize their presence uh, amid us here, and I will invite you to introduce the bishops who are present here. Among us, Your Grace, we have Mr. Joshua Chitakule, who is the Secretary General of IRCU. Thank you for coming. Uh, the Right Reverend Archman Wright Bonabinji, the General Secretary UJCC, is present with us here. Uh, Mr. Amos Mwesije, uh, Church of Uganda Family TV, is present with us here, Your Grace. Uh, Mrs. Amena Irene Odongping is present with us here, Your Grace. Uh, Reverend Dr. Paul Koza, the Director of Education, Church of Uganda, is present with us here, Your Grace. Mrs. Barbara Mugisa, Provincial Mother's Union and Family Coordinator. Uh, Reverend Richard Mugume Rukundo, Children and Youth Ministry. Uh, Reverend Canon John Awodi, the Diocesan Secretary, Kampala Diocese, is present with us here, Your Grace. Uh, Mrs. Christine Chintu, uh, the former uh, leader in the Church of Uganda, uh, that is the former head of laity, is present with us here. Uh, Your Grace, we have the Reverend Canon Dr. Rebecca Nyegenye, the Provost All Saints Cathedral, is present with us here. Uh, we have the Reverend Pascal Ochunkoma, is present with us here, Your Grace. We have Reverend Loom James. Uh, St. Peter's Sambia is present with us here, Your Grace. Mr. Bala Mohebwa, the Provincial Treasurer, is present with us in this service. Uh, Canon Dr. Ruth Senyonyi, uh, Mrs., is present with us together with our brother and dear the Lord, the Reverend Canon Dr. John Senyonyi, is present with us here in this uh, gathering. Uh, Mr. Sadiki Adams, the Communications Department, and uh, Reverend Johnson Kansime, the Archbishop's uh, uh, chaplain, is present with us here, Your Grace. Uh, we have the uh, Centennial Publishing House MD, uh, Lillian Andaro. We have Ruth Karebijue, uh, Uganda Bookshop. We have Ellen of Namirembe Guesthouse uh, present with us, Your Grace. Um, uh, Your Grace. Uh, we have the Reverend Susan Stella Ameso present with us here. Uh, Your Grace, we have the, the Church of Uganda Teachers Representative, Dr. Charles Kahigiriza, is also present with us here. And uh, the Speaker, the Reverend Canon William Ongeng, the Provincial Secretary, is also with us here. We are here to receive our Vice uh, President, uh, who is coming to join us in this meeting, Your Grace, and uh, you're most welcome, uh, our Vice President. Uh, she will have to take a seat, and the service continues as we had planned uh, before. Uh, may I take this opportunity, Your Grace, to ask you to come and introduce the bishops who are with us here. May I kindly request you to put our hands together and receive Her Excellency, the Vice President of Uganda. <laughs> welcome, welcome. I want to join the Provincial Secretary to welcome uh, each one of you here present, and uh, the Minister will come later on to introduce you in your respective capacities. And I want to welcome uh, uh, the Secretary General of uh, UJCC, who is also representing the new Metropolitan uh, Museum 
of the Orthodox uh, Church of Uganda. Welcome. Let me now welcome and introduce to you uh, the bishop elect of uh, Kumi Diocese and his wife, Bishop Eric Michael Okui. You are welcome. <laughs> he, he will be consecrated on uh, 6th March uh, in uh, Ngola. So we pray for you and may God prepare you and the Mama for this new calling. Let me welcome and introduce to you uh, Bishop Samuel Egesa Bogere, the Bishop of uh, Bukedi Diocese, and uh, he's our preacher today. Please receive him. Our Janani Rooms Day is such a great day. It is being commemorated today and all over the world, not only here. So we have different services in different churches. But I want to appreciate uh, the government of Uganda for gazetting uh, definitely this day for uh, the matter Archbishop Janan Lum. Thank you very, very much. We are indeed grateful. And uh, because we know uh, before general room there are other matters, matters at Namgongo, but the first one who was uh, killed for the gospel was uh, Bishop Huntington, who was killed on 29th October 1885. So we are so grateful for gazetting uh, this day for Janan. We need to consider uh, also uh, have Bishop Huntington. And we are so grateful that the government accepted to consider remembering this man in a special way because without him, we wouldn't have heard the gospel. So thank you very much. And we pray that uh, God will bless you all here as we listen to God's word, may our hearts be ready to receive him speaking to each one of us individually. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we prepare our hearts to receive the word of God, shall we all rise up on page 15 and sing that hymn, both in Luo and English. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father.
Let us pray. May I invite us to observe a moment of silence in the presence of the Lord. Even as you speak to your Father, is your Creator, is our refugee, is our shield, is our protector. He is our shepherd and is God, is God who is love. Mention our full petition is to him and is ready to answer. Father, thank you so much for yet another opportunity to be in your presence. Thank you for this fellowship. Thank you for our country, Uganda, and our leaders. Now, God, we are here to commemorate the life and service of your servant, Mart and Saint, at Bishop Janan Loom. We pray that you take over, my God and Master. Come, speak to us. Use me, I your vessel, to communicate your word. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We can sit. Later, the issue of protocol will be handled very well. But your excellence, your grace, for now, allow me to say all protocols observed, brothers and sisters in the Lord. My name is Samuiri George Bogere Egesa. By the grace of God, I am the Bishop of Bukit Diocese. And when we talk of Bukit Diocese, we are only meaning seven districts. The district of Busia, Tororo, Butaleja, Chibuku, Udaka, Butewa, and Palisa, plus the municipalities of Busia and Tororo. My wife is a woman, just saying that deliberately. My wife is a woman, and she's called Elizabeth. God gave us a small African family of seven children. One of them went to be with the Lord. We have two beautiful daughters. We have four handsome sons. I am a Rotarian. Actually, I'm the change maker president of the Rotary Club of Tororo. I'm a member of Red Cross Society Tororo branch. Your Excellency, I'm a trained decoder. <laughs> I am the chairperson of the governing council for UCU Mbale College. But above all, I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior on 15th July. 1986 at 5 a.m., and I will never regret. I have a very long testimony, but I can't say everything, but something which is related to the theme today. When I was born, my father died when I was only three days old. To be specific, I was born on 23rd March, 1963, and my father died on 26 the same month, the same year. Later, my, my mother died. Where I grew from, the Vasco Gassembu, I don't know whether it is true, they say she went to cook for the husband who had passed on earlier. 
This morning, Your Grace, I am exceedingly very happy, but also humbled for having been given the opportunity to be the preacher of this historical day. And I know many people are following this service on different TV channels, online and so on, and we want to welcome them. The theme for Church of Uganda this year 2022 is from that text, Lamentation chapter 3, verses 21-24. And that theme is hope beyond affliction. Hope beyond affliction. That is the theme for the province of the Church of Uganda this year 2022. However, for this particular service, our theme is hope beyond death. And death here is only representing a very long list of human afflictions, which I'll be running through shortly. Brothers and sisters, a brief biography of Archbishop Jana Niluumu has been put in the order of service, pages six and seven. You can read it for yourself. However, I want to make a few highlights of the same. Jana Niluumu was the third Archbishop of the province of the Church of Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi and Boga Zaire. His life and ministry were cut very short by the regime of dictator Idi Amin Dada. On 16th February 1977 at Nakasero, as we commemorate today, the record has it that he was only 53 years old because even when he was born, he's indicated in the order of service. So he was only 53 years old. Luum was brutally murdered by Amini's regime as a result of standing up and speaking out persistently and passionately against the undemocratic governance of that time. Amin and his men thought that if Luum was murdered, that would mark the end of the voice for the voiceless, which was not the case, because you can't imagine. 45 down the road, we are here, and we are talking about Jan and Luum. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, because the devil had disabled the brain is of Amin and his men. <laughs> they did not think of hope beyond death. For them, they ended at the point of death. The murder of Archbishop Janan Luum marked the turning point for Amin's regime and the subsequent liberation of this country, Uganda. His murder resulted in serious revival and renewal of the church. It enabled the church to remember, to rethink, to refocus, and to regain. At Bishop Jana Niluum was uh, later recognized as one of the saints of the 20th century. That's why we always say Archbishop Mata and Saint Jana Niluum. Hope beyond death. And in my sharing and presentation and discussion, I will be trying to unpack this statement hope beyond death. You can actually put it in a question form. 
Is there hope beyond death? Is there hope beyond death? death? In this context, death is only representing a long list of afflictions. And allow me just to mention some of them. As I said, the, the list is very long. So when we talk of uh, hope beyond affliction, hope beyond death, death is uh, representing a very long list of afflictions, human afflictions. These include death, of course, diseases, pandemic, you know, COVID-19, now the one which is on people in the village call it Macron, <laughs> or Micron. Eh? Pandemic, drought, famine, poverty, locusts, calamities, destruction, misfortunes, evil, persecution, corruption, torture, witchcraft, tribalism, tribal wars, land grabbing, human sacrifice, human trafficking, rape, defilement, extra, extra. So when I will be sharing about hope beyond death, have that behind your mind, just representing many things. And therefore, is there really hope beyond death? Is there hope beyond death? Not only death, but including other human afflictions like I've just uh, mentioned. The answer is yes. But you are free to discuss it in the way you want. I will be looking at this in three categories. Number one, biblically, we have a lot of evidence to prove and confirm that there is hope beyond death. Now, I'll give a few examples. These examples run from the Old Testament through the New Testament. Let me start with Job, chapter 19, verses 26 and 27. Remember, we are trying to unpack the statement, there is hope beyond death. Or you can put it the other way around, is there hope beyond death? Job chapter 19 and verse 26, the Bible says this, after I leave my body and my skin has been destroyed, I know I will see God. Verse 27, I will see him with my own eyes, I my, myself, not someone else, will see God. And I cannot tell you how excited that makes me feel. In these two verses, brothers and sisters, Job thought that God had brought all the disasters upon him, first with the death and decay. But Job still believed that there was hope beyond death. He expected to see God with his own eyes. And therefore, going by the presentation of the oath of Job, you can quickly agree that there is hope beyond death. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, Job was talking about the resurrection of the body. He was talking about the second coming of the Lord. He was talking about the judgment day. He was talking about eschatological things. Hope beyond death. 
hope beyond human affliction. Example number two. First Peter chapter one and verse three. All are praised God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with a living hope. And we've just said the Apostles' Creed, which is the summary of the statement for Christians. Yes, Jesus Christ was crucified, died, buried, descended to the dead. But on the third day, he rose again. That is not only the source of hope, but is our hope as Christians. And therefore, there is hope beyond death. Jesus Christ is not only the source of hope, but I want to submit that he is hope himself. Example number three, John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. The verse 25 of John chapter 11 has this to say. Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Everyone who believes in me will have life even if they die. It's Jesus himself. Giving Martha words of counsel, comfort, and hope. Verse 26. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never really die. Hope beyond death. Example number four. Some of you have the Uganda prayer book. Who use it? For us in Eastern, we still use it, uh, especially in my own diocese, which I lead. But there is a hymn in that prayer book, which is commonly known as Centenary. Hymn number 239, which says, Moyogwange Ulida, and stanza number four. Let me just read what this stanza says. Buli Jones Kwagala, Nabe Ranga na Wenze, Mubulamu, Mukufa, Mumagombe, Muguru. Avalu Mani to Yimbire Wam. One, two, three, go. Wali wa malo zinga vidi, to call said in a really common. Buli jonze kwa gala na veranga na weze mobola mo mukufa mo magombe mo golub. We are only talking about hope beyond death, but you know. I said earlier on that uh, the then president, who gave himself very many titles, including Freed Marshal, Idi Amin Dada, and his men, for them they thought when Luum is murdered like they did, that would be the end. But we are seeing evidence that really there is hope beyond death. Category number two, where we get evidence, are some scholars and uh, theologians, and I will just mention one of them. Professor Monica Rose, one of the chief editors of our Daily Bread of this year, 2022. Page 229 has this to say, about hope beyond death. And I want to quote, the final release of a loved one is very painful. But because, because of God's promises, we have hope beyond death. End of quotation. 
So the evidence to prove and confirm that there is hope beyond death is not only in the Bible, but even scholars, people have read books. Theologians, they also believe in this. But number three, category number three, where, where we get some of this evidence is also in a tradition and our culture. When some people lose their beloved ones, they make a statement. Let me use those from the Eastern, which I know very well. People from Busoga, Bukede, Baguere, Dopadola, name them. But for the Wasoga, when they lose their loved ones, especially the women, as they lament and mourn and move around, they make a statement like, Onamukiza Baba. Mama, Mama, Onamukiza Mama, Oyo. <laughs> but even the Baguere do the same, meaning that greet for me, my mother. Those people went before you, greet them for me. They say that. The, the Japs who are here, you know, they also say, Motirani Baba. Motirani Baba. Jimama. Greet for me those people. What does that mean? It means these people also believe there is hope beyond death. Let me come to our daily life. But before that, you know, even Janani himself, he also believed in this. It's on record that on 16th February 1977, Archbishop Loom and the other six bishops were tried on a charge of smuggling arms. Shortly, they separated the Archbishop Loom from his friends. But before he went very far, he turned to them and said, do not be afraid, I see God in this. That was done in Loom. Of course, he knew he was going to die. They had killed very many people. Said, my brothers, my brothers, don't be afraid. He was using statements similar to what Huntington used very many years ago. He was using statements like what Stephen said in Acts chapter 5, but including Jesus himself. As I said, death is only representing a very long list of uh, human afflictions, which I actually ran through for you. So this human affliction called death, together with all the other afflictions which I mentioned earlier, cover and affect all aspects of life. Aspects of life, all of them, political, social, economic, cultural, spiritual, religious, environmental, intellectual, again the list is very long. Let me now come home and try to connect this to this day. During the regime of Idi Amin, Dada, this nation was actively dying. This is a, a medical statement. This is, these are words by science who are here. Let me repeat this. During the regime of Idi Amin, Dada, this nation was actively dying. What does this mean, actively dying? What does it mean? It refers to the final phase of the dying process. 
I went to my primary section during that time, 1971, I started the primary one. 1977, I sat for my Piero E. I remember what was happening. There was clear scarcity of sugar, salt. Can you imagine? <laughs> salt, sugar, soap. I am the Bishop of Bukedi Diocese, but I grew up in Busoga. And so in Busoga, we used the purple leaves to, to, to wash clothes during that time. There was cast of paraffin. But your excellence, I want also to mention very quickly that there was cast of peace. Peace as a commodity was very scarce. There was no freedom of worship. And I remember that time all these other churches were closed. We had only Mosques, then Anglicans and Roman Catholics. And we used to go to school Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, we don't go to school. Again, we could go on Saturday. This country, this nation, during the regime of Idi Amin, Dada, was actively dying. There was no freedom of speech. Yesterday, in the hotel where I stayed, there was a small screen. And then there was, I think there is a program on NBS called the Barometer. Barometer. And the discuss, and some of you who watched this, you saw, uh, most of them were members of parliament. And one of them said, do you know, you people, I don't want to mention the names, do you know that the head of our parliament is a mafia? On a TV. A mafia, and he said, this is not a mafia of this lower class, a mafia of world class. Hello. There is hope beyond death. But then I said, really? And this is a member of parliament? And they went on and discussed and discussed. What am I saying? During that time, the, the, the regime which was actively dying, there was no freedom of speech. But today people can say anything. Freedom. Some of us like me, if I was a bicycle, I would be size a very mobile. Eh? Size 22. You know people who ride bicycles. You know they're in sizes. 22, CG what? CG what? 24, 24, CG 26. So if I was a bicycle, I would be 22. And if I had come with my wife, <laughs> who is actually 24, during the time of Amin, you walk with such a, a wife, and these brothers will ask you, e, e, bibi, anani. You make a mistake, you say, young, ah, when? He is, he is, he is, yako. He is, he is, he is, but nowadays, I move with my wife, who is like a younger girl, taller than me. No one who says, this is not your size. Some of these things were scarce. But thank God for some of you Ugandanese. Some of you Ugandanese, led by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, Yoweri Kaguta Tibuhaburam Seven, who believed and agreed that there was hope beyond death. That political death, 
And they started preaching the gospel. And I know you have read Sowing a Mustard Seed and many other books. Today, we're enjoying what was looked at as hope beyond death over 45 years ago. There are people who thought actually there is hope. The last Sunday of, uh, of January I was in uh, Gomba. And, and uh, I'm told His Excellency has a home there. He was supposed to be the guest of honor. He was uh, the guest preacher. And I reminded the people there about what I've just told you. Hope beyond death. I told them this. Some people have not seen this. Because nowadays even a child of two years just give money, we will they go there and try to, to sugar, sugar, and they will give sugar. Because it's there. Which was not the case. We have total and complete peace, apparently, in this country. At least south to north, west to east, and the central region. Again, when I was in P5, that was 1975, those people, those men of that regime, could decide to start their work maybe around 7 in the evening. As they move, they sing, Nani Jogo, Sisi Jogo, Nani Jogo, Sisi Jogo. Then they could rape women, they could defile them, they could shoot, they could shoot people, they could take everything. Because that was a regime that was actively dying and it needed people like Jana Nirum and other people. And you know, I just told you when they arrested them, they tried them, they said, ah, these are smugglers, they bring arms here. He separated them, and of course, he didn't come back. He turned his friends, six of them. He said, don't be afraid. I see God in this. In other words, he was saying there is hope beyond this. When I was uh, mentioning the human affliction, is, I did also mention the torture. Torture. Not everything on social media is true. But we see these things. That time is so. Is this in Uganda again? And Musei, who is not in for this, the other day I had him saying, if you rape, if you defile, be what? Hey, you didn't hear. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, there is hope beyond death. But remember I said, this death covers and affects all aspects of life. Yes, we have freedom of worship. We have freedom of speech. We have the cultural leaders around. Even yesterday we are saying goodbye to one of the kings in the eastern region, Papa Emori Mori. That was not there. As I try to find how I conclude my sharing, allow me to submit and say, before hope beyond death, becomes a reality, what is required of us. Because this is a future thing. We are not there. We are actually talking about eternity. 
when we lose our, our beloved ones <laughs> and, uh, and, and uh, with the due respect, our politician is to come and talk and talk and you end by saying, may his soul rest in eternal peace. <laughs> that statement is not biblical. It makes people very lazy. That after all, even if I don't do this, when I die, people will stand and say, may his soul rest in, in eternal peace. Resting in eternal peace <laughs> is a matter of uh, making a choice. You decide. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13, the Bible says, blessed are those who die in the Lord. And the simple English of primary. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. If those who die in the Lord are blessed, they retire, their works or deeds follow them, those who don't die in him are cursed. Therefore, before hope beyond death that I have been discussing and sharing, before this hope, which is beyond death, becomes a reality, what is required of us. And I thought Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 has a summary for that question. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. And the Bible says this, The Lord God put the man in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the people went to good schools like Dr. Senyun. <laughs> you know what this means. They are not saying to work I need. To work it. The Lord God put the man in the garden of Eden. To work it. And take care of it. Brothers and sisters. As we expectantly. And faithfully. Wait for the hope beyond death. This duty in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 is very critical in life. Very critical. Very critical. Your Excellency, some younger people, I'm not saying younger people, some don't want to work. For us who are field workers, when you are going for field work, you pass through centers very early in the morning at 8. You find people eating mlokonyi, chapat, what? And these younger men have wives. I hope I have people from Tororo here. During the local down, there is a younger boy. I don't know whether he's even a boy, I mean, of 15 years, who impregnated three girls of 13 years. And the parents of these girls told their daughters, go. Go to your husband. And so this younger man I hear is a hero. He brags around. He has three wives of 13 years. And he's only 15 years. How will this younger man sustain that family? And you know what has happened? What has happened? You know, I talked about rape, I talked about defilement. So I'm saying, before we experience this hope which is beyond death, what is required of us? And I'm proposing and suggesting that the answer may be in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. The Lord God put the man in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And I'm saying as we expectantly, faithfully, waiting for the hope beyond death, this duty, this duty is very critical in life. It calls for faithful stewardship. Stewardship. I told you I'm a Rotarian. And in Rotary, the issue of stewardship is very critical. Because for us as Rotarians, we give in money 
and request people to allow us to do service. You mishandle that money, think for lack of words, I hear people saying embezzlement. I don't think that is embezzlement. That is a theft. It calls for faithful stewardship. If Ugandanese are good stewards of the land and the other wealth endowed to this nation, then we shall, continu we shall continually have all we need. All we need for livelihood and community transformation. As it was for Jana Nidwum, whose life and ministry we are commemorating today, 45 down the road, brothers and sisters, let us love our country. Let us love our country. When you read what is in the papers, again, like I said, not everything in the papers or social media is true. But at times you say, is this true really? Let us love our country. Let us love one another. Eh? Now there's discussion of the speak of this parliament, parliament of Uganda. Some people are saying, how can you do that? Eh, that's a lot of money. <laughs> but we read in the papers, people have taken more than that. Let us love one another. Let us promote dialogue. I also subscribe to IRCU and UJCC. And that was that. Let us people talk. <coughs> Without misusing the freedom of worship, like the other brother who said, do you know the head of our parliament is a mafia? <coughs> and he went ahead and said, the mafia of world class. If it was Amini's time, that brother wouldn't be there now. But he's around. He's <laughs> he again, you can't say it. But even other statements which are even harsher than that have been said in this country. Let us love one another. Let us love. Let us promote dialogue. Let us love to work. That's what the book of Genesis is saying in chapter 2, verse 15. Let us put God at the center of all we do. Again, our motto for God and my country. And now younger children in Ibutkedi, they say, no, that motto now is for God and my stomach. For God and my family. For God and my tribe. For God and my region, I don't know where we shall end. Regionalism, constituencyism, countism. Now we are going down to the village. Where shall we end? Where shall we end? Let us support and join in the struggle for securing the future of this country. We should not look on. This is what Jana Nilumu did 45 years ago. And if you read some articles that they published just yesterday and the other day, he continually went to Amini himself, said, Your Excellency, I have come here to tell you myself. I'm the Archbishop. This is bad. And he knew he would die, but because he believed in, it, in, in the hope beyond death, he continued. Let us support the integration of East Africa and Africa. There is hope beyond affliction. 
There is, be, there is hope beyond death. I may not know what you are going through. I have good news for you. I don't know. We said this affliction is, human affliction is, affect all aspects of life. I may not know what you are going through. For instance, nowadays we have this song of gender-based violence. And according to his grace who is here. Nowadays it has a little changed. Some men, some men are tortured every night, but they don't talk. They die honorably because they fear to tell people. But some women torture their husbands. The other day we saw a man who actually ended up hanging himself and he went, he was born again, he went and hanged himself near the church. Uh, and the story was that the woman decided to sit in the sitting room watching TV and this, old, this uh, poor man said, Munange, come and we rest. Don't tabula, leave me alone. Four, I mean 10, 11, midnight, she was not there. The man went out and hanged himself. There is a hope beyond death. That's why we are here. And when we talk of revival and we talk of church, I don't mean church of Uganda. I talk about the universal church. The death of Janani Rum. The death of Janani Rum was not only for Uganda, but the entire world. And as I speak now, services are going on all over the world. So I may not know what you are going through, my brother, my sister. And your grace, shortly, I request that person who would like to pray with us will stand. You don't know, I don't know, politically, socially, economically, and I'm going to pray with the people in three categories. Category number one, I know this is a, a, a high level of uh, congregation. I know I have born again people here, I don't want to mention them. But there are those who have not taken the step. And you may need to do it. That's why we are here. Today we have not come for this party or the other party or whatever. We are here to talk about the service and life of Jana Nilum, who was murdered 45 years ago. And if you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, who is not only the source of hope, but the hope we must have. And I know we have uh, to observe the SOPs. We've sat very well. I just request you stand where you are and we shall pray. But number two, maybe you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ sometime, but you back a slid and things are not going on as expected. I want to encourage you to stand and we shall pray. And number three, you may be having a challenge. Yeah? <laughs> like I told you earlier on, again, in Busoga, some people say, Munde kenobu wange, leave me with my disease. Why don't you stand today, today and we pray with you? This Jesus Christ, the one who in the room believed and preached the gospel, and up to the last minute is telling his brothers, my brothers, I can see God, God is hand in this. Don't be afraid. There is hope beyond the level I'm going to. And he was short, like I said. Do you want to pray with me?
May I request you to stand where you are. Just stand where you are and we shall pray. You have something you want to present in the presence of the Lord. Just stand where you are and we shall pray together. God bless you as you stand. I can see you standing. I may not know what you are going through. Your excellence, thank you. Stand and we shall pray together. and pray for these your children commit them in the presence of the Lord may the Lord be with you let me invite you to make your own prayer in your heart as you ask God to meet you at the point of your needs. First of all, Lord, we pray that you receive those who want to accept you as Savior and Lord. If you are here, make your own prayer and say, Lord, come into my heart and save me. Father, receive those who are making that prayer. And those who have different kind of afflictions, Maybe you are sick. Maybe you have some trouble in your inner lives. May God stretch his healing hand upon you. And at this moment, we also pray for the right honorable Jacob Olanya who needs uh, our prayers. Extend your healing hand upon him. And we pray for every one of you and those who are following us, wherever there, may God take care of them. May God meet us all. And may God meet the leadership of this country his Excellency, General Kagutam Seven, First Lady, 
and also the Vice President and all leaders. May God minister to those who are persecuted Father, thank you so much because you are here to hear our prayers. As you remember, our, our beloved Father, Archbishop Janan Room, help us, Lord, to be bold, to strong, and trust you wholeheartedly. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in Christ, we continue in our prayers. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ and the gift of the church and the gift of salvation. King of kings, as we celebrate this great day, remembering your servant, Papa the late Janan, Lum the martyr, the archbishop, we thank you for his life, we thank you for his ministry, Repentant of our sins as humanity, we do ask that you give your church worldwide, and especially in this country, Uganda, the courage and the boldness to preach the genuine gospel, speaking truth to power and truth to communities, that we may know you Jesus Christ as Lord and King, we pray that the church will stop from just being religious, but preaching the transforming gospel of Christ, that Christ touches us, transforms us, that we feel a burden in our lives, just like Jan and Loom felt, and carried it for Ugandans, and it became the voice of the voiceless then. May we continue with the same mantle, being the voice of the voiceless in our country that we speak with the love your gospel to our people. We also pray that you will speak to our people that we may live careful lives, not careless lives, not reckless lives, but lives that honor you. And we want to pray that as a leadership we will be an example that we will take wholeness and boldness into this, our communities in our country and pray against injustice and human, and human sacrifices in this country and abuse of the rights of our people. We just celebrate with the rest of the world this great man, the voice of the voiceless, the champion of justice. We would like to thank you for our country, Uganda, our President Yoweri Kakuta Museveni, our Vice President Major Jessica Alupo Appel, members of Parliament, Cabinet and members of Parliament. We want especially to pray for our Parliament, that our members of Parliament will be responsible people. What they utter, both in private and public, should promote unity love and care for one another, concern for one another, concern for our country. We lift them to you. We lift all our city mayors, our LOC 5s in our country, LOC 3s, LOC 2s, LOC 1s, and their committees, public servants and public service in general in our country, remembering our forces, our police, UPDF, those that might not be known to us, asking for mercy upon their lives as they execute their duties. We thank you for the peace that we have in our country. We do not want to take it for granted, as your servant pointed out to us. But we pray that you will help us to translate that peace into revival of our lives, revival of our economy, revival of everything that we do, that it glorifies your name, not just a human trash. We come to you, O oh Father, limited as we are, 
committing our citizenry into your hands and praying for tranquility in their lives, that the church, together with, working together with the government, will promote the transformation, not only of our livelihoods, but also of our spiritual lives, that we will be able to understand that there is hope beyond death, there is hope beyond human affliction. I want to thank you for our opening of our country this year. You know the pain and struggles that we, struggles have gone through as a country. We pray that you enable our people, especially the business community, and all those involved in the revival of our economy, that you give us grace and wisdom, and faithfulness and honesty and dedication to revive strategically our economy, our institutions, our hospitals, our schools, our roads, everything that enables us to be catapulted to middle income status. We pray you enable us to do it with a passion. We want to thank you for the gift of health to humanity. Remembering Psalm 103, verse 3, you declare to your servant David that you forgive all our sins and heal our diseases. We want to repent on behalf of Ugandans for the sins that, that might have come to us as a result of our sinfulness. That Lord forgive us. We do dedicate COVID-19 to you as a pandemic that has crippled the world over our economy, our pride. Now we come to you in humility, repenting of our past and asking for new mercies that are new and faithful every day that you grant to us grace and heal our country. We remember schools, children at school, the struggles they go through schools, our teachers, our health workers, everyone who needs to be remembered, our peasants, that grant us grace. As we struggle through this disease, you will cover us with your grace. But cognizant, cognizant of what you have done in our country, as a nation, we thank you that you have restored hope amongst us. Remembering those who have lost their dear ones, we want to associate with the Iteso community upon the loss of Papa Morimor, Papa Suban, and pray for hope. There is hope beyond death. We pray for this burial. Thankful to you for what government has done, offering a national burial. We want to pray that what was spoken to His Excellency yesterday will bear fruit among our people. Also, we'd like to thank you for the gift of Daoists in this country and the gift of Kumi. We want to pray that the Daoists of Kumi will be pacified by you, that you restore hope, you restore harmony, you restore unity. Go ahead of us. Thankful to you for the House of Bishops for the decision have made. We pray for the Bishop elect and his family and pray for the arrangements of consecration for 6th of March, that you bless them, they glorify you. Father in heaven, grateful to you for this day, grateful to you for our country, grateful to you for Jan and Loom, grateful to you for your servant, our Archbishop, the Most Reverend Samuel, and his family, grateful to you for the House of Bishops and all the religious in this country, Grateful to you for the House of Clergy and the House of Leite. We do dedicate this day to you and all our plans to you, believing that something new will happen in our country. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we we'll pray. We want to thank you, our Lord Bishop, for the message, and we thank the Lord for each one of us 
in the ways in which we have responded to the message, we give glory to the Lord. And if you've given your life to Jesus Christ, and this is your first time, and you want to see a minister, we want to encourage you to go to the church back home and introduce yourself to the minister that you've given your life to Jesus Christ. Uh, we are now going into a time of offering and giving back to the Lord, and the choir will be ministering, but we'll have baskets uh, strategically placed in different places, so where the basket is, we'll slowly move and put our offering as the choir continues to minister. thanks to the Lord. Our God and our Father, we give you thanks for today. 
Thank you, Lord, for these gifts that are here presented before you, the gifts that have come from the hearts of your children. And Lord, we pray that you receive these gifts, sanctify them with the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that they'll be used to bring glory and honor to your name. In Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. May God bless you and keep you. May God sustain you. May God take care of you individually and take care of our families and needs. And may the blessings without soul of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit rest upon all of you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. like to give God a very big hand clap if you don't mind all of us. <laughs> Your Grace, the Archbishop of Uganda and uh, the entire team that has led us, we are not taking you for granted for coming here to grace this function. This is a function that is shared by the, both the church and the government. The two stakeholders have a very big interest in this wonderful activity and want to thank God that uh, the death of Archbishop Jenan Lumo enhances the collaboration and partnership between the church and the state. And that is why you see the state is highly represented here and the church is highly represented. We give God the glory for that wonderful work that Jenan Lumo, our father and mentor, was able to do. My work is very simple, Your Excellency, the Vice President of this great nation and members who are here. My name is Reverend Canon Aaron Mwesije. I'm the Director of Ethics in charge of Religious Affairs. And therefore, this activity falls under my docket uh, because my work is to coordinate the religious operations and activities. activities in the whole country called Uganda and um, the leadership of Honorable Liri uh, Akelo. At this material time, I would like to first of all welcome His Grace and I want the members who are here to thank His Grace, the main celebrant for this function. And I'm going to request uh, the church leadership, of course, to begin making remarks uh, and then after that after the church has given remarks then I'll invite the state officials who are here, a few of them to also make remarks and that will be the end of the day we don't want to waste time and we have a few speeches here this is not a political rally we are here to commemorate and thank God, so can I request the peers of the church of Uganda to come and take us uh, as far as remarks are concerned from the church Uh, Your Grace, the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, I take this moment and single opportunity to invite you to address the guests and the gathering here who have come to commemorate this auspicious day, Your Grace. Uh, thank you so much. Master of Ceremonies, Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Uganda, 
uh, retired Major Jessica Lupo and our friend. I want to thank God for all leaders here present in their protocols. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Let me appreciate the government of Uganda for definitely honoring God by remembering this great man. The third Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, uh, Archbishop Janan Rum, who is Archbishop of Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, and Bogazai. I am the ninth Archbishop, but we still have a lot of work, definitely, to fit in the shoes of those people who came before us. And I want to appreciate God for all of you and for supporting the church. Right now we have uh, a building in Kampala which is called Janani Room Church House. And uh, that one was built in the memory of this Archbishop. Soon, uh, you know, there's, uh, uh, there is some work still going on to ensure that uh, the name is properly put up, but this building was built in memory of Archbishop Jalani Rome. And I want to appreciate uh, all of you for your support and uh, individuals, uh, organizations, and the government to ensure that uh, we clear our debt. So thank you very, very much. I want to appreciate uh, the preacher for the great work. Would you please appreciate him? Uh, like I already said, uh, I know uh, Right Honorable Rebecca Kadaga. Would you please stand up? Uh -huh. That one has really worked so hard to ensure that uh, Bishop Huntington is dead, is also gazetted. Because, uh, you know, there was uh, a problem. Uh, Kabaka Mwanga told the Vasoga Luba, go and release this man. And Ruba didn't understand Uganda very well. Because he said, Mute. And Ruba just killed him. He thought that Mwanga said, Mute. And the Vasoga said, No, it is Mwanga who said, Mute. Uh, you know, there was a confusion, but the man was killed at Chiando on 29th October 1895. So, as you remember, General Room. Let us definitely have even more more plans of remembering Archbishop Huntington, who was killed in Osaka. When we remember Janan Room, he's remembered as one with a voice for the voiceless, and also advocate for human rights. As we remember him today, we need to think about protecting life and the human rights. I want to appreciate His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, for one of his first speeches this year. He said that those who are Torturing people should stop. I remember that very well. And uh, I'm very disappointed by some people when I read the newspapers, when I get some message on my WhatsApp, that there are still some people who are torturing others. Uh, this is against what the president of Uganda wants. So why don't the government make the investigation to who are those torturing 
Ugandans, if it's true. So that our celebrations today of Janan Room becomes meaningful. And I want to make that appeal. People who are torturing others are disobeying the president of Uganda. And Your Excellency, I want to pray that uh, as we celebrate this day, human rights, peace, and the rest should be definitely given first priority. Because this is the very reason why uh, we have the peace we have here for people who want to fight for the torturers. And may God help us that uh, torturers are not accepted. And if there are those who have gone wrong, they should be definitely brought to courts of law so that they are, the, the need for is done. I want to also, as a celebrate general room, we should fight those who are destroying the peace in our country. The corruption, human trafficking, and also there is also organ trafficking. These things should really be fought so that we have the Uganda we need, a God-fearing country, a peaceful country, harmonious country, prosperous country, educated country, a healthy country, and a caring country. Thank you so, so much. May God's blessings rest upon you and be with each one of us individually as we continue to think about Janan Room and those who went before us. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Your Grace, for such wonderful remarks and challenging words. I would like at this material time to introduce and welcome the Minister of State for Ethics and Integrity, Honorable Lire Akello, who is here, and she will come and introduce the state officials, the diplomats who are here, but at the same time she will also make some remarks. Actually, she heads a very important directorate that coordinates national efforts in the fight against corruption, but also is in charge of rebuilding the moral infrastructure of this nation. Your Excellency, the President and NRI regime, their focus is building the economic, social, and political infrastructure. But I want to tell you that the Directorate for Ethics and Integrity, which we established, is actually very important to rebuild the moral infrastructure that paves the way for the political, economic, and social infrastructure. Without the moral infrastructure, we can do nothing. Honorable, can I request the technical team for State House to bring a microphone, another microphone, please, for the minister to speak, and then also, later on, she invites the minister for presidency. Team has no microphone, only one.
Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Uganda, Right Major Jessica Rosa Lupo, Your, Your Grace the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, the Most Reverend Dr. Stephen Kasimba Mugalu. I thank the Church of Uganda for the very enriching church service that you have led us through an enriching message we have received. To have faith in God's unfailing love and mercy as we remember our Saint Archbishop Janan Loum. Your Excellency and Your Grace, allow me to recognize the presence of the following dignitaries who are present. His, Lord, His Grace, His Lordship, the Chief Justice of Uganda, the first Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for East African Community Affairs, the third Deputy Prime Minister, Cabinet Ministers and Ministers of State present, the Dean of Diplomatic Corps, Ambassador of Eritrea, His Excellency the High Commissioner of Tanzania, His Excellency the Ambassador of Burundi, His Excellency the Nuncio Representative of His Holiness the Pope, His Excellency the High Commissioner of Rwanda, His Excellency the Ambassador of the Democratic Republic of Congo, His Excellency the Honorary Council of Eswatini. The, His Grace the Archbishop of Church of Uganda, Honorable Members of Parliament present, all security agencies present, the clergy Church of Uganda, the visiting clergy from other denominations, the representative of the Secretary General, Dr. Tanga Odoi, heads of anti-corruption agencies, the family of the late Archbishop Jana Lohum, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, and all the invited guests, I welcome you all to this 45th commemoration of St. Jan and Loom Day, and I thank you for honoring us with your presence. As a Ugandan, I feel proud that we have St. Jan and Loom as one of the only 10 martyrs of the 20th century who was given a special place in the history of the Anglican Communion. He was an outstanding leader, a great martyr, and a compelling role model for all of us as citizens of this country. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Uganda, I thank you for honoring us with your presence as the Chief Guest at this commemoration. Your Excellency, allow me to invite the Minister for Presidency, Honorable Mili Babalanda, to give her remarks as she's our Cabinet Minister. We are all under her. We want to invite her to make her remarks and then she can invite you. Thank you all for coming and I want to thank the choir so much for giving us all those beautiful songs. Thank you so much. Her Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Uganda, retired Major Jessica Rose Pale Alupo, 
His Lordship, the Chief Justice, Alfonso Winidoro. The Right Honorable First Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for East African Community Affairs, Rebecca Alituara Kadaga. The Right Honorable Third Deputy Prime Minister and Minister Without Portfolio, Lukia Nakadama Isanga. His Grace, the Archbishop of Uganda, Church of Uganda, Dr. Stephen Kazimba Mugalu. All the cabinet ministers present, all the ministers of state present, all the heads of diplomatic missions present, all the members of parliament present, all the religious leaders present, and all other invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and do welcome you to this year's Janani Lumu Memorial Day when we remember the great son of Uganda who paid the ultimate price for the truth and for a better Uganda four decades ago. The theme for this year is Hope Beyond Affliction. Take from the Book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 21 to 24, like what the bishop said. This theme encourages us to believe in God for the sustainable transformation in all aspects of our life. It promotes forgiveness, even as we promote nation building and development. Archbishop Janan Lumu, even if long dead, still lives in us as believers and people who cherish freedom. He died so that others may live. His blood watered his motherland so that new seeds of faith may germinate in us. Rome showed courageous leadership in opposing Idi Amin's dictatorship that had seen innocent Ugandans violently murdered with no chance of defense. Rome op opposed gross human rights violations and religious harassment during the third chapter of Ida Amin's role. He is indeed recognized as Africa's matter of the 20th century. As we remember Archbishop Lomu, we are also remembered of the steps of freedom that the NRM government and uh, the wise leadership of His Excellency, the President, Yoel Kagutam Seven, took to rescue Ugandans from the times when there was no freedom of worship to a point now when believers have dignity and a voice. This new chapter of religious freedom and tolerance was ushered in when His Excellency took office in 1986. Since then, he has led Uganda well with the guidance of the Almighty God, whom he believes in deeply. The NRM government has facilitated a healthy coexistence between church and state, bringing them together to serve the interests of the ordinary Ugandans. Everyone can witness and feel the transformation this has brought to Uganda. God has rewarded His Excellency the President of Uganda with the longevity in power because He honors Him. The Lord has seen us through many challenges and will surely see us to greatness. Your Excellency the Vice President and distinguished guests, 
There is, however, a few challenges that we must all deal with, namely the people who use their platforms to sow seeds of divisionism and hatred, and the others who use religion to defraud the public. These kinds of religious leaders have no place whatsoever in the Uganda. That is forward-looking and that is emulating the president is example of a humble, tolerant, and all-embracing leader. Archbishop Lumo preached unity and a non-manipulative doctrine. He preached the truth. We cannot have this divisionism and manipulation any longer under our watch today. Let's all share the lessons of the president who has embraced God's guidance, even in his own household, where there are family members that keep feeding him with the spiritual guidance. The leaders who are struggling to gain, to gain power should look at His Excellency the President and learn from his humbleness, love, and unique character. This is exactly the opposite of the past times where such leaders would have faced difficulties upon uttering any incentive comments to the president. We thank the president for showing respect and due regard to the faith movements and supporting their development projects. We thank him for his kind heart. May Archbishop Lumo's spirit continue to influence us even as we come together to build a God-loving, progressive, united, peaceful, reconciliatory, happy and productive nation. Let us dialogue together wherever there are differences and resolve them as one people united in the faith in memory of Archbishop Lomo, Your Excellency the Vice President, at this juncture, I take the pleasure and honor to invite you to come and address Ugandans and the entire world that is tuned in on this occasion of the Archbishop Janan Lomo Memorial Day 2022. I thank you. Yeah, Lordship, the Alfonso Windolo, the Chief Justice of Uganda, the Right Honorable Alituala Rebecca Kadaga, the First Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister for the East African Affairs, the Right Honorable Rukia Nakadama, the third deputy prime minister, colleagues, cabinet ministers present, members of parliament, the most reverend Dr. Samuel Stephen Kasimba Mgalu, the Archbishop of Church of Uganda, and your brothers, the Reverend Samuel, Right Reverend Samuel Egesa, the Bishop of uh, Bukke the Diocese, Right Reverend Samuel Kahuma, the Bishop of uh, Bunyoro Kitara Diocese, the Right Reverend Wilson Kitara, the Bishop of uh, Munyoro, Kitara Diocese, the Right Reverend Samuel Kawuma is a Bishop of uh, Kedi, and all the clergy, 
present there at the altar with you and most importantly the choir recognize you uh, your excellencies the ambassadors and members of the diplomatic corps uh, the other religious leaders present like my friends from the orthodox church and our brothers from other faith who have managed to make it to this ceremony. The Secretary General of NRM, our brother Richard Todong and other NRM leaders present here. I would like uh, your grace Archbishop you to allow me to introduce to this congregation and also recognize the following people in a very special way. Mr. Ben Loom, the son of the late Archbishop Loom and your dear wife, Mrs. Pauline Loom. And uh, your grace, there is also Mrs. There is also Mrs. Julie Loom, the daughter of the late Archbishop Loom. And her, her husband, Dr. Eric Adrico. and other family members from the late Archbishop Loom. Your Grace, allow me to recognize all the invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, and dear Christians. I want to start by thanking the Archbishop. I want to start by thanking the Most Reverend, His Grace, the Archbishop of Church of Uganda, for inviting me to come here to celebrate the life of the late Archbishop Loom. Thank you very much for inviting me and all of us. But allow me to add that I came here because you invited me, because I also love to hear the word of God from the religious leaders, but also I know the history of Uganda and the life of the late Archbishop Wum. It's a very important day, that's why it's even a public holiday. But allow me to add that His Excellency the President, who was supposed to be our chief guest here this morning, delegated me to come and read his message to you and the congregation. And Having received a very good homily from the bishop who preached, I would like also to say that I will form my small report when I go back and also extend it to him, together with what has happened here, which we all appreciate as leaders, as Christians, all the guidance you have given us and all that free advice you have given us. We sincerely take it very uh, in good faith and we don't take it for granted. Allow me now to read the message of His Excellency the President to us and all Ugandans on this day. 45 years ago, Archbishop Janan Jakalia Luum was brutally murdered for his firm stand against the evil crimes of the Idi Amin regime on the people of Uganda. This gruesome murder, which occurred on the 16th of February, 1977, coincided with the 100th anniversary of the arrival of the first Anglican missionaries in Uganda under the auspices of the Church Missionary Society, CMS. The first Anglican missionaries reached the southern end of the Lake Victoria in 1877. Therefore, Archbishop Janan Luum was murdered during the preparations for the for the centennial celebrations of the Church of Uganda, which was slated for 30th June 1977. 
He was supposed to be the main celebrant at this important occasion. The rest, torture and murder of the Archbishop were not only criminal, but also grave sacrilegious acts. There is a command in the book of Psalms, chapter 105, verse 15, and the Lord says in, those, in that chapter and in that verse, I quote, Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. New King James Version. You can get that from that Bible, that, that Bible. Your grace and distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen and Christians, religious leaders carry the anointment of the Almighty God to shepherd and guide the people in spiritual matters. Therefore, when you harm an anointed person, you are directly obstructing the progress of God's work and bringing a terrible curse upon yourself. Idi Amin brought a curse upon himself by murdering Archbishop Janan Nuhum. Government gazetted 16th February as a public holiday to commemorate Archbishop Janan Loom's legacy and martyrdom. The day is also an opportunity to reflect on the valor and courage displayed by Ugandans in the fight against bad leadership and dictatorship. We honor the memory of the dead and celebrate them for their sacrifice and contribution to Uganda's liberation from the shackles of oppression. For instance, two cabinet ministers, Charles Oboth Ofumbi and Irina Ayo Oriema, were murdered alongside the Archbishop by Idi Amin soldiers. The Chief Justice of Uganda Benedicto Kiwanuka suffered the same fate earlier in 1972. He was abducted by Amin state operatives from the high court premises and later murdered. Many academicians, religious leaders, politicians, business people, foreigners, ETC, were either arrested or murdered. Some were forced to flee the country, and your grace and all of us, ladies and gentlemen, the situation was even worse for the defenseless persons who were murdered in hundreds and thousands. It is this abysmal state of affairs which forced some of the patriotic fighters to mobilize mainly the peasants from the countryside to defend themselves and defeat dictatorship. I have explained elsewhere the genesis of the Idi Amin phenomenon of bankrupt leadership, which bedeviled not only Uganda, but also other parts of Africa. It has its roots in the distorted structure of political power, which we unfortunately inherited from the colonial government. It was characterized by a dualism whereby you would have Europeans on top and African auxiliaries below them. In administration, for instance, there would be a British administrative officer with an African clerk before him, below him. In the army, 
There would be a British officer with a Ugandan sergeant, I mean type, below him. In the 1960s, when Uganda was about to become independent, the Uganda army did not have a single second lieutenant, the lowest commission officer. All the officers of the King's African Rifles were British. By 1960, Idi Amin was one of the three most senior army officers in the Uganda army. Yet, Idi Amin had spent only two years in school. When we gained independence, these auxiliaries became the principals. The African sergeants who were semi-literate became field marshals overnight. Idi Amin, Mobutu, Bokasa, ETC. They overthrew the political leadership soon after independence and took over the whole society. They did not know how to go about managing a country because they had little education. With such crop of leaders, it was obvious that the country would drift into a state of anarchy and instability. This is why I and other freedom fighters resisted the Idi Amin regime immediately it captured power. We knew he was a disaster to Uganda's long-term development agenda and stability. It is sad that Archbishop Janan Luum and many others became victims of a broken and bankrupt state. The Archbishop displayed great courage in the face of danger. He had the option of running into exile, but he chose to stay with his flock and endure humiliation and intimidation from Amin. He refused to abandon the people for the sake of his own safety. In the end, he may have paid a great personal sacrifice with his life, but his death strengthened the people's resolve and determination to get rid of the Amin regime. There was no doubt in anyone's mind, in Uganda and outside, that Amin was a liability to the country. Even those who had supported him in the beginning, for instance, the British, were alarmed that he could go that far to murder an archbishop over differences in opinion. It is not surprising that two years after the murder of the archbishop, Idi Amin was finally ousted from power. Therefore, as you reflect on our strategic past, you should also thank the Almighty God for enabling us to correct the mistakes which stalled Uganda's progress. Some countries have failed to emerge from the mistakes of bad leadership. They got severely torn apart and have remained in an ungovernable condition as a result of the bad decisions of their leaders. There are many examples that one can quote. However, in the case of Uganda, we were able to rescue the country from the total collapse and redirect it on the path of stability and prosperity. The fruits of liberation are now ripe in every sector of our society. Uganda enjoys unprecedented peace and stability. There are some few evildoers like the ADF who are puzzled by this great achievement. Their attempts to distract us from the work of building Uganda into a middle-income country have been decisively defeated. The UPDF is determined to uproot 
any disruptive and negative forces inside or outside Uganda. Uganda's rapid march towards the goal of social economic transformation cannot be stopped by anyone. Finally, I wish to thank you for remembering the life and martyrdom of Archbishop Janan Loom, and I urge you to guard the values and principles for which he laid down his life. May the soul of the Archbishop Janan Loom continue to rest in eternal peace. I thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, for those wonderful words. And I would like also to thank you for introducing the family. Thank you so much. Your Excellency, we request you that after the anthems, we shall have a group photo with the Archbishop just in front so that this function becomes very historical. And that photo is very historical in our archives. So can I now? I would like before you also, Your Excellency, to thank the organizing committee for this function, the Directorate for Ethics and Integrity, which is here, members, would you like to put your hands up or stand up for recognition? Directorate for Ethics and Integrity staff. I would like to thank the Office of the President staff, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, State House, and uh, the Church of Uganda, also headed by the Provincial Secretary and Provincial Treasurer, we have actually been working, as I told you, Your Excellency, that the death of Jenan Lumu and the commemoration of his life enhances the working together of government and church. So I thank the organizing committee for this. Your Excellency, as we celebrate here in Kitugumat Muchwini, we have 10 bishops there. We have 1,000 pilgrims. I have got the report and part of our team is there. So there are more than us here. And therefore, the country is celebrating the life of a hero and a champion of forgiveness, reconciliation, and faith. So without wasting time, would you like, choir, would you like to lead us? And we are going to sing the anthems in the reverse order as much as we never sang. And we, are, we want to honor the actual anthem as well. So members, would you like to stand up? And we sing the actual anthem, the East African anthem, and also the Ugandan anthem, and then after that we shall have the group photo with His Grace and the Vice President leading us. Thank you.
African anthem. Thank you, choir. Your Excellency, that choir is from Kitugum. They traveled all the way from Kitugum to come and bless this function. 20 of them, young men and women, give them another big hand clap. And actually, they are the people who sing now these days for national functions when we have prayers even organized by the state. Kitugum choir, thank you so much. Now, Your Grace. Would you like to join His High Excellency the President and you lead us in a group photo? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you once again for being part of uh, the celebrations here to mark the 45th anniversary uh, commemoration of uh, the martyrdom of the Archbishop Janani. 
um, Luwum um, on this particular day. We remind you that this day was officially gazetted by the government of Uganda in 2015 to be a public holiday and um, this is a public holiday today to remember uh, the good works of uh, the faithful man Janan Luwum who was murdered in cold blood so many years ago today. We've been part of the celebrations here and I of course covering it and I just thanking um, the celebrants and uh, the preacher of the day today, um, the most reverend, right reverend uh, Bishop Bogere Egesa Samuel George uh, from uh, the Diocese of uh, Bukedi who preached a very good message on the theme of today um, which um, talks um, which was derived from uh, the book of Lamentations chapter 3 uh, verses 21 uh, to uh, 24. That was the reading and um, here is where we are or oh, we've been here today. Um, one of uh, those things that have come out very vividly from uh, the clergy, especially uh, the uh, leaders of the church, um, the archbishop and uh, the other bishops is uh, uh, condemning um, in the strongest terms uh, torture of um, its nature and torture of all kinds. We want to thank um, everybody who has uh, been here and of course made this um, uh, possible here today. The Vice President, um, Major Retired uh, Jessica Alupo, represented His Excellency the President of the Republic of Uganda. And um, we just heard from her, of course, reading to us the message of uh, uh, the President getting to us and uh, reminding us where this all uh, emanated or started. Now, um, this day, um, is forever remembered, of course, uh, for the w good works and uh, to many of us who do believe um, um, in uh, God uh, for this country, um, like we here, it's a country um, whose motto is forgotten my country. Um, we um, remember that, of course, we thank um, those who are here before us and, of course, those who paved way, whose blood um, has built the church that we are now um, celebrate or the church that we are in uh, today in this country. Later did we know that uh, maybe that this would actually get us to where we are. And to just remind you that uh, because of uh, the many of such things, Uganda has stood out to be one of uh, those countries that has produced um, leaders, martyrs, and, of course, quite a number of things. Yesterday when we were here celebrating, uh, the life of uh, the Mori Mori, uh, Papa Iteso. A uh, lot of things were said here, and uh, one of those very striking ones was that um, he is uh, the Emori Mori uh, of the Itesots in this country of Uganda, but also uh, the Itesots in the other countries, in Kenya, in South Sudan, and um, in Ethiopia. Uh, for example, um, when you uh, get into the history of uh, how all this began uh, from Abyssinia, which is a current day Ethiopia, you notice that. Um, when they moved and so joined and they found their way uh, to uh, Uganda and of course to Teso, um, the meaning of the name Teso itself and quite a number of things, you just want to accept and agree that uh, the concept of Uganda, the Pearl of Africa, is indeed a very powerful and very strong because how come that that is with us here? To remind you that um, it's not only the Emori Mori of Teso but even the Omukuka uh, of Bamasaba also doubles and crosses borders. When you go to uh, places like like the Renzururu, you notice that um, uh, the um, uh, Musinga also crosses borders. Now, these are some of those very unique things that make Uganda the pearl of Africa. Now, when we celebrate this day today, we still uh, commemorate and remember all that. We want to thank you so much, and of course, thanking the te choir here that came from uh, Kitgum, where the celebrations uh, normally happen. Uh, they've done a very good job, uh, sang very well, and of course, everything has been as uh, planned. We want to thank you so much now, as we also uh, turn you back to our broadcast house on Nile Avenue. Avenue for our regular uh, programming for this uh, day. My name is Jagen Asemakola Zixoka for and on behalf of the team here at uh, the Kololo Independence Grounds. Just wishing you all the best over Janan Luomu Day today. Forgotten my country, stay blessed and bye bye again.